I just, I don't even know how to explain it. What are we, what are we talking about right now? Is your dad alive or not? Are you okay? All right, guys, we made it through the first part of the entire year. All of a sudden, it is now February. I think that's insane. But with a new month comes a monthly wrap up, so I'm really excited. My goal for January was to read four books. Your girl read five. So today, we're gonna review everything, see how I felt about them, see what ratings I made, and go from there. I was gonna start with like the best book, the one that I really liked, and then I was like, no, let's start in order. But then I read that last book, and that last book really triggered me. So we're gonna start with the worst book. All I have to do is get my book from my uh, bookshelf, because you know your girl's official now. I'm an official book girly. Remember, because we built this last time. Also, we are gonna go through the last three books that I read in December, because I said I was gonna give my review, but I didn't, because I forgot. So at the end of this video, if you still wanna see how I felt about Love and Other Words and the rest of the Cruel Print series, just stay until the end. So. These are my January reads. I'm sorry I gotta do this to you guys, but I gotta get this worst one out of the way. I have to. I went to the store going off of people's recommendations and just buying books without doing the proper research to see if it aligns with what I like. And then I ended up with Buy a Thread from Lucy Score. Let me just, before I give you the rating, let me just hone in my feelings right now. This book could have easily, easily been a four star read. But my girl Lucy decided to take 550 pages and just turn it into an absolute disaster. I don't care. I can't even like try to sugarcoat it. I just can't. I can't. This book triggered me for so many reasons. Let's just start. Let me give you the synopsis so you can see where I'm coming from. So by a thread is about this woman. She is really down on her luck right now. Her dad is sick. She's currently working like 5 billion jobs, just trying to cover his well-being as well as keeping a roof over her head. And then she meets this guy. His name is Dominic. He is like the CEO of this really crazy, amazing fashion company, right? It's an enemies to lovers type of thing. They meet at a pizzeria. She is serving him. He's a jerk. So she becomes a jerk too. And then they clash. He gets her fired and then all of a sudden she's out of a job. When he was at the pizzeria, he was there with his mom. His mom saw the whole thing, she felt really bad. So at the end, she caught her at a bus stop. She caught, um, what's her name? I try to block it all out. Allie. She caught Allie at the bus stop and gave her a job because she felt bad about her son getting her fired. Allie starts working at the fashion company that Dominic works at, and as you can probably imagine, they fall in love or whatever they want to call it, right? Lucy Score is a good writer. She is. She got me really engaged with all the secondary characters. They became relevant and like were important in certain parts, and I loved hearing their backstory and everything like that too. And don't get me wrong, the first 100 pages, I was hooked. I was convinced, convinced that this was gonna be an amazing book. The amount of just absolute ridiculous smut and just spicy nonsense, astronomical. Astronomical, I've never read a book where 80% of it was just spicy nonsense. What are we, what are we talking about right now? Is your dad alive or not? Are you okay? Like there are so many other things I was worried about and all they wanted to do was go back to just talking about that. And don't get me wrong, I'm no prude. I don't mind spice, but it has to make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like it has to make sense. It can't be every other word. Like, ma'am, your dad's in the hospital. Is he okay? I do not care about your sex life. I, it just, it was too much. It was too much. Literally, when it got to like the 250 page mark, I was already like, I don't want to read this anymore. But I paid for this book. I bought this book. And I was just like, I've already invested all this time. I just got to see it through. What the, what the heck is this about? What are we doing here? It had the most cliche ending. Just the ridiculous amount of smut that I have ever seen in my entire life. This is really the worst spicy book I have ever read. It was just absolute nonsense. I felt like weird reading it. I'm like, the first few times I'm like, oh my God, that's so cute. Like they finally made it happen. And then over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then I'm just like, what am I reading right now? I, I feel weird. This is weird. Can we just, can we stop? I see spice as like, a, it's like an accent color, right? If you put a little bit of an electric blue into a gray room, it looks beautiful. It brings everything together. It shows that you have a little bit of character, a little bit of personality, right? 
But now, imagine you're painting your entire house and everything in it that electric blue. Now it doesn't make sense. Now you look crazy, right? That's how I felt about this book. It was just too much. It was too much. It took away from the story. I no longer cared about the characters and I was just honestly just trying to get to the end. If she would have just cut out half of that and just kept some of those scenes, this would have been a four star read. She's a great writer. I loved the character development. I loved hearing how they didn't want to be with each other and then they came together and like all these other side characters and things like that. I love seeing all of that come together. This could have easily been a four star read, but because Miss Lucy Score just loves talking about one thing. This became garbage real quickly, okay? This will be my harshest review today. I'm sorry if anyone loves this book. I just, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. We're done with that one. I'm sure Lucy has some other really great books. I will not be picking them up because after that I'm pretty traumatized and I gave that book a two out of five stars. It could have easily been a four star read, but instead I feel like it's a two star read. But we can go from the worst to the absolute best with this next one. This is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This was written by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm not gonna lie, I did not have very high expectations for this book. I solely picked this up because everyone has been talking about it and I'm like, I have real bad FOMO sometimes. I'm just like, let me just see what everyone's talking about. I didn't think that it was gonna be much. I thought it was gonna be very like superficial and vanity driven and not really deep in any way, but I was just like, you know what, let me just see. What's the vibe? Completely wrong about this book. This was my first five star read out of the entire year. It was honestly like no other book I've ever read. It was so engaging from the very beginning. I was completely enthralled in the story. This story is about Evelyn Hugo. She is an older famous celebrity in Hollywood. She's currently getting her uh, life story written out by a journalist. She picks out this journalist specifically for a specific reason. I can't tell you much because I don't want to spoil it, but let me just tell you no matter what you think about this book no matter what you get from the synopsis just read it it was so so good you know what my goodreads review doesn't have any spoilers and i think it perfectly sums up how i feel give me one second when i picked up this book i could not have lower expectations for it the synopsis didn't sound like the type of book that i was interested in and to be honest i only picked it because a lot of influencers that i respect truly enjoyed it i thought best case scenario this would be something i wouldn't hate i did not expect this book to be my first five star read of 2023 and yet here i am I assumed it would be a slow paced 50s to 60s period piece about an imaginary star that went through men for the hell of it and I was pleasantly surprised by how wrong I actually was. Books like this remind me of why I love reading and the magic a few written words can hold. I love coming into a book with preconceived judgments and assumptions just to be completely and utterly proven wrong and that is exactly what this book has done for me. This book shows the complexities of a woman that would do anything for the people she loved no matter the consequences. Taylor Jenkins Reid somehow found such a beautiful balance between displaying all the glory that comes with fame as well as the ugly dirty work that actually comes with getting there. She so perfectly put into words how frustrating it can be to be a woman in a world made for men that I often found I could not help but highlight, dog ear, and underline so many parts of the book. If you have ever loved, ever lost, or ever wanted anything in the world, this book is for you. Don't call me author Kalila, but that was a pretty good review if I do say so myself. It's completely engaging from the very moment that you start to the very ending and I absolutely love how they summed up everything. It was just so perfectly written. It was incredible and I highly recommend that you read it. No matter what you think about the book beforehand, just if you listen to one thing, just read this book so so good next up was better than the movies this is by lynn painter and i gave this four out of five stars it was really really cute basically it's about the main character her name is liz she lives next door to this guy that she's hated ever since like elementary school his name is wes and it's that really cute enemies to lovers thing and they've known each other their entire life now fast forward to high school this guy from their childhood that they both know his name is michael he leaves initially when they're all in elementary school and then he comes back for high school right around prom time and so Liz is like freaking out she's so excited she really believes in all these rom-coms and romantic comedies this is something that she inherited from her mom so when he comes back to their high school she thinks it's fate she tries to get really close with Wes so that he can be her wingman with Michael and in that process she ends up falling in love with Michael of course and this was just really really beautiful the banter was really good I loved their interaction between each other and it was also like helping 
helping her work through losing her mom because she lost her mom when she was younger to a car accident, a drunk driver hit her. And ever since then, she just hasn't been whole and she's just been taking on the personality of her mom to try to like keep her name alive and instead of trying to just be herself. And Wes helps her see that and then he loves her for who she is, has always loved her. I really loved it because it was unique in that it always referenced like really good rom-coms in real life. And it also had like a playlist, it had a soundtrack for them. And I just thought that was so cute. It was just really a nice wholesome read. I really enjoyed it, four out of five stars. The next one up is Dial A for Aunties. I did give this a four out of five stars. And this was just the most ridiculous book I have ever read in my entire life, like ever. It was just so unrealistic, so hilarious, just every bad thing that you could possibly think of happened in this book. I truly enjoyed it. It's not like a deep book. You're not gonna have some life-changing revelation after, but it is really funny and it's just a really good wholesome read. So. Basically, this book is about the main character. Her name is Madeline. She falls in love with this guy in college, but she breaks it off with him because she chose her family over him, but like for the wrong reasons. It wasn't like, oh my God, you don't love my family. I'm not gonna be with you. It was more like, I'm afraid of growth. I'm gonna stay with my family because I'm scared to take the next steps type of thing. But she's always regretted it. She's always missed him. And that's important because she never dates after him. And so her family is tired of her like being single. So her mom sets her up with a blind date. And when she goes on the blind date, he gets like really handsy and gets really weird. And she accidentally kills him. The most ridiculous like possible way to, it was just hilarious. And once she realizes she killed him, she tells her mom, who she does like this wedding catering business with, her mom and her aunts, and they all help her try to dispose of the body. And it's just the most ridiculous thing. Somehow, where they put his body ends up to their next wedding, and then she has to solve like this other situation there. And it was just absolutely chaotic ridiculousness but i really really liked it it was so funny i think i read it in a day it was just ridiculous there is a little bit of romance here but not too much it really just focuses on the chaoticness of this unrealistic day when i tell you every chapter i was like ain't no way ain't no way what what stop it right now stop it right now and some things like even when she tried to make the connections i was just like there's just no way that would really happen. I still enjoyed it. No matter how unrealistic it was, it was just such a funny light read. Very, very good. Now, what's not a funny light read is Crying in H Mart. I also gave this five stars, but it is nothing like the last two books. Instead, this book focuses on a real person. Her name is Michelle. She is a Korean American woman and unfortunately her mom passes away due to cancer. And this book is kind of just how she dealt with her mom's passing. She talks about her childhood growing up as half white, half Korean, feeling not Korean enough, and then feeling super Korean in her classes and things like that. This book really resonated with me because she talks about all the little ugly nuances of grief that no one talks about. She talks about all the little ugly nuances of not being the cookie cutter American and as a black woman here in America, I just related so much. She may have been talking about different cultural food here and different like cultural traditions and stuff like that, but it really relates to anyone who doesn't fit the cookie cutter mold of being an American. And I just, it really spoke to my soul. As some of you may know, I did lose my grandma to an illness too. And the way that she spoke about her mother's cancer journey just really reminded me of how my grandmother's diabetes journey was and how long and painful and hard it was to see the person that you love in that kind of pain and how you deal with it how you decide to keep living life like it was just really incredibly written i think the thing that most stood out to me was just how brutally honest she was like she never tried to hide anything she never hid any emotion it didn't feel like anyway and i just resonated so much so if you've ever lost anyone or ever felt like this type of pain, this type of trauma, I think that this would be a great book. What astonished me most about this book was how she so perfectly described every Korean dish that she's ever had and blended her Korean culture with grief. Like, that's not an easy thing to combine. Like, 
your cultural heritage as well as something like losing someone to cancer and the way that she did it was just flawless i really enjoyed this book she's an incredible like artist she has that artistic mind she's also in a band and she talks about how music was so important to her in her life and how after her mom passed away she really threw herself into the music again and it led to major success she's in a really big group now called japanese breakfast i believe and i listened to some of their music it's really good i would highly recommend supporting her she just seems like an amazing human being i really really enjoyed this book there's not much more i can say about it but get it this and the seven husbands of evelyn hugo i think everyone should read very very good now if you've made it this far we have gone through all five books i read this january we had some really good books we've had some really terrible books not gonna say any names and now we can go back to what I read in December. The last three books that I read in December was the last two books in the Cruel Prince series. Yes, Cruel Prince series, as well as Love and Other Words. Now, I love these two books. Let's get these out of the way. I gave The Wicked King four out of five stars, and I gave The Queen Out of Nothing 4.5 out of five stars. They were both really, really good. I feel like it summed up the entire plot really well. I know that there is a fourth book which I got. It is The Stolen Heir. Have not started reading it yet, but I am excited to read it. I felt like The Wicked King was much better than The Cruel Prince. Cruel Prince was kind of slow and a little bit boring, but this really tied everything together. And then The Queen of Nothing just was a perfect, like if they never made another book, this series would have been really, really good. But I am excited about Stolen Heir. All of them combined, a really great series if you like fantasy, that type of thing. Very good. Now, I am rushing through this because I want to get to the next book. Love in Other Words. Um, I don't want to say this book changed my life, but this book changed my life. This was the best love story I have ever read in my entire life. In my entire 25 years on this gosh darn planet, this was the best love story I have ever read red see this is how you do spice okay you add a little salt based sprinkle of it and you really focus on the plot okay this was so well written the story everything I I don't even know how to explain it okay let me slow down let me slow down main character Macy she is now a doctor she lost her mom when she was younger right she's left to be taken care of by her dad and her dad wants her to have everything because macy's mom was like the love of his life and he really just wanted to do right by her and do everything that he could to make sure that macy felt loved and didn't have as much of a hole as she you know would have had if he was a little bit more absent after losing her mom so they get a vacation home and their next door neighbor has a bunch of kids and one of them his name is elliot and they grow up together reading books and loving books and just getting to know each other and their relationship was just <laughs> i said i was gonna cry um their relationship was just built on honesty and genuine love and affection for each other and the build up to that it was just the prettiest thing I've ever read. It was just so honest, so raw. Like that is how I expected to find the love of my life. Did it happen? No. Is it too late? <laughs> Possibly. But after reading this, it just made me believe in love again. It's not that I didn't believe in it. It's just like, I didn't think it for myself, but this was just so beautiful. And I was just like, well, maybe one day, you know what I mean? It was just, this book just reminded me of why I read, why I'm a hopeless romantic. It was just so beautiful. I don't want to tell too much of the story, but honestly, it is one of the best books I have ever read and hands down the best romance book I have ever read. I wanted to read this again today. I was thinking about this today at work like, man, I know I have to stay on schedule with the other books, but I just really want to read this again. It was so, so good. It kept going back from when they were kids and how they started to fall in love to when they were adults now, when they drifted apart and stopped talking to each other. You'll understand why when you read it. And it keeps going back and forth until it gets to the climax of why they stopped talking to each other. And it was just so perfectly executed. Amazing, amazing, Mwah. five out of five stars. I'm gonna read this a thousand times over. I absolutely adored it. And I'm excited to see what we read next in February. Right now, I'm starting with Everything, Everything. I literally just started it today, but I heard it's really good, so I'm excited. And we can go through this and all the other books that I read in February a little bit later in this month. We had some really high highs and some really low lows, but all in all, I thought I read some really great books 
than the last two months and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. My hair has been acting ridiculous this entire time. If I also get another bad book talk book, I'm done with book talk, okay? This book was so bad, I'm not kidding. I just, I can't, I can't do it. Thanks a lot guys, for nothing. Just kidding, I love you, bye.